So while we are here, I would love to know from you what time it is in your part of the world. And I know I've asked that before, but this time change thing has been a killer this week for the group. It seems like 3 p.m. Same for me. Um, <clears throat> 3 p.m., 8 p.m. Okay. And where are you, Astrid, that it's 8 p.m.? 8 p.m. Netherlands. Oh, Spain. Such beautiful countries. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. It's it's confusing because I think that in North America, we changed our time. Well, I know we changed our time last weekend, but I think that in other parts of the world, it's still in a couple of weeks. So there's going to be maybe a little bit of confusion, but we'll try to clean it up and add more time zones in the post for you as we go forward. Um, okay, icebreaker question. I'm going to have to keep an eye on the uh, on the waiting room. Actually, what I'm going to do is whoever is here as body graph chart, I'm going to make you a co-host so that you can please let people into the waiting room because if you've been on something with me before, you know that I do not need more ways to get distracted. So I will try not to um, not to have to follow along with that little piece of the puzzle there. So we are going to be talking about how to write your email nurture sequence today, your welcome sequence. Some people call it an indoctrination sequence. I absolutely hate the term indoctrinate. So I'm going to probably never use that term, but that's what it means. Uh, that's one of the things that you'll hear it referred to as. I would love to do an icebreaker question with you first here, because I feel like we, I mean, well, I guess our tech stuff broke the ice anyway, but I just think icebreakers are fun because we are community here and we, you know, we're in the group together. Oh, I'm just going to ask people to mute as they come in. We are in the, uh, in the group together and it's nice to really get to know each other. Like it feels like it's us bringing human design to the world together, right? So <laughs> it's nice to know more about each other. So I'm going to ask you kind of a tricky one today and we'll see how, how honest we can be with each other. If you could see me right now, you would see that I blank and you don't have to type in the first part of it because if I'm reading the chat, I deconditioning sequence, somebody saying you don't have to uh, write the first part because I will read that in the in the chat for you. But if you're typing into the chat, if you could see me right now, you would see, for instance, maybe you're wearing pajama bottoms. Maybe it's business on top party on the bottom. Maybe it's that uh, maybe you're holding a baby. Maybe you're feeding your dog. Maybe you're in bed. I've had so many calls with people when they're just like propped up in bed because it's different time zones. Slippers. If you could see me, you would see that I am wearing slippers. If you could see me, Shelly says, you would see that I am chewing gum. If you would see me, you could see that I'm standing in a room full of laundry. I feel your pain. Although with the empty nest, I got to say, we have a lot less laundry than we've ever had. It's beautiful. Um, if you could see me, you would see that I just got out of the shower in a towel and marinating dinner. I love it. Love it. Love it. If you could see me right now, you would see that I spilled lunch on my tank top and I didn't change it. I just put a jacket on over top and figured that you wouldn't see it. I've got the camera angled so you can't see the soup on my shirt because we're having issues with our water and I had to take my laundry to one of my kids' places and I forgot my favorite tank top there. So uh, if you could see me, Andrew says, if you could see me, you would see my little baby on my lap joining in too. Aw. Uh, if you could see me, I have chaos all around me from the move, Ugh, moving, moving, moving. Okay. So it's just fun to, to kind of do that. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Just before we really get into it. Okay. All right. So, uh, email nurture sequence, let me know in the chat. Do you have an email nurture sequence set up or are you just kind of starting to think about this? I know we went through a lot in boot camp week. Where are you at with it? How scary is it for you right now? Almost in MailChimp. Love it. Not for this lead magnet. Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about why we need a nurture sequence, what the purpose of a nurture sequence is. And then I'm going to give you kind of a framework that you can use to write three to five emails. And I want you to know that there are a bazillion ways that you could do this and there's no wrong or right. As long as you have something there and you're bringing people into your world and welcoming, welcoming them then um, you're doing well, okay? You're doing better than many, many entrepreneurs on the planet. So um, what do you think the purpose of your nurture sequence is? Or what would you like the purpose of yours to be? And you can unmute if you'd like, or you can um, type it in the chat, whatever you like. Connection. Mm -hmm. I want to um, connect with people and not overwhelm them with information but keep them informed. <laughs> yes. 
Love that. What's your profile, Corinne? I'm a 6'2 emo man, Jen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love profiles, building connection, make people feel appreciated, build trust and relationship, build trust, uh, share with leads, more info about their human design. Yes. Stay seen. Yes. Important. Very, very, very important. So all of these things are important. Um, and I'm going to suggest that really what we want our nurture sequences to do is to let people know that they're in the right place. We, we are building connection with them for sure. And we want them to know like, okay, you're here. We want to set up expectations for them. What can they expect from you? When they join your world, what can they now expect from you moving forward? Because I think that people really love it when we meet expectations, but also when they know what they can expect from us. I was on a call the other day with someone and I didn't realize it was a sales call. Um, and it was just very icky and, and gross. And it was because he had a hidden agenda. And I think that that's something, you know, I a long time ago, I remember hearing that in a training that people don't care if you have an agenda, they care if you have a hidden agenda. And not that your nurture sequence is an agenda, but you just want to let people know what they can expect from you. So you're telling them that they've landed in the right place. You're reminding them of your free thing and you're telling them how they can work with you moving forward. And I think that that's the piece that we either miss entirely or we come out too strong with, and it becomes like a sales sequence, and sequence instead of a nurture sequence. Sometimes we're like too afraid to sell something. So we go on the other, the other end of the spectrum, right? The biggest mistake that I made in my business was not selling something early in the game in my email sequence. So I would love for you to walk away from this understanding that there needs to be some sort of an exchange of money early in the game, or at least for people to know that they can exchange money with you when they're ready. Oh, I'm just going to mute you here one second. Um, that's really important. Oh. <laughs> we both hit the button at the same time, Shannon. <laughs> so my mistake was that I have a background in one of my backgrounds as a many gen, many backgrounds, but one of my backgrounds is I spent a decade in the direct sales industry and I had a team of over 5,000 people. And in the company that I was a part of, it was really encouraged that you, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm getting all of these messages for, uh, to change my language and that's distracting me. Um, it was really encouraged that you trained everybody's teams, whether they were everybody's people, whether they were on your team or not, which is fine and great and good and all of those things. But we were really discouraged from ever selling anything. So what happened in my world was for about a decade, I gave information and gave information and gave information and I taught and taught and taught and taught and taught. Can anybody relate to this where you feel like you're teaching human design and teaching human design and teaching human design and, and saying all of the things. And then, um, it's not, not coming through for them. Like there's no sales coming through. There's no next step coming through for you. So that's a big piece of your nurture sequence as well is letting people know what the next step is because they're coming from your lead magnet and your lead magnet needs to be awesome and valuable and amazing and an excellent resource and incomplete. It needs to not tell them everything that they need to know, right? So what you wanna do in your nurture sequence is let them know what to expect, let them to know that they can hire you and let them know that they need more. Make sense? I'm just gonna take some C here. You can probably hear by now that my throat is a little bit scratchy today. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just checking checking the chat for a second. Okay. All right, good so far. Got more people coming in. So um, when I looked at, I've lost my other monitor as well. Um, so I don't have that with me today. I had to go in for repair. So I'm looking at my notes. When I Googled, what does nurture mean? Nurturing is taking care of something or someone to help them develop. Nurturing leads is the process of building relationships with your prospects with the goal of earning their business when they are ready. And I think that that's really important for us to remember. So your nurture sequence needs to start immediately. Does everybody have the worksheet? Or does anybody have the worksheet? Yeah, okay. Okay, Marie, I see you nodding your head no. Uh, if you go into the um, registration page, the download will be there. Maybe somebody who's here from Bodygraph Chart could pop it in, pop a link into the comments so that you can get it. It has all of the notes that you're going to need from today and also some blanks that you can fill in. 
So your nurture sequence needs to start immediately. So in your email system, it will have um, a little button that you can click usually to say in one day, in two days, in three days, whatever it is, there has to be one that goes immediately that delivers your thing. And then um, how many emails should you have? So those of you that have emails sequences set up already, how many emails do you have in your sequences? Or how many do you think there should be in your sequence? Well, Victoria says her conscious sun is gate 27. That's my Mercury and my unconscious Mars. And it's my daughter's conscious sun. It's actually a, a gate that all of my family has. Five to seven. Corinne says my Mercury too. Yeah. Um, 27 is Chiron. How beautiful. Mm. I didn't get lucky with a Chiron like that. I got 5121. So it's been a ride. <laughs> it's been good though. Five to seven. Okay. Yeah. So typically we say three to five. So I want you to walk away from this session knowing that if you write three emails in your nurture sequence, you won, you're winning, okay? If you write three email sequences and you leave it for the next three months, it's okay. I, I think five is a sweet spot, seven. I mean, I was on somebody's webinar the other day and he has 18 emails in his nurture sequence. It takes 80 days for you to get through his nurture sequence. And I'm like, holy, that's a commitment. Um, I'm not sure that I could, I mean, I'm not sure I would be doing the same thing as a Manny Jen 80 days from now, like, <laughs> holy cow. Um, so five to seven is a really good rule of thumb, but even if you write three, then it's better than nothing. Um, we talked, we talked about why you need a, uh, a nurture sequence and then how not to annoy people with your emails. Okay. So here's what I want to do as a reframe. Does anyone here really like their, their inbox? love maybe pop it in the chat because I can't see all of you I can only see a few people but who loves to communicate by email no I get annoyed with my emails interesting anybody else do you love email hate email couldn't care less better than Voxer amen yes <laughs> I do it all day at work ah interesting okay okay I love email I absolutely love email. If you ever want to communicate with me and get a reply from the bottom of my heart to the bottom of yours, you're going to get it through email. I absolutely love to communicate by email, but I love words, right? I love the written word. So not, I just want to set you up for not everyone hates email. We have this thing in our heads where we think that everyone hates to be emailed and they're going to hate emails. Well, if you go into writing your nurture sequence with the energy of everyone hates emails and nobody wants email from me, then guess what? Nobody's going to want emails from you. But if you go in thinking, you know what, I'm just going to nurture my people, whatever is in your own human design that you want to bring into that, your profile, whatever it is that you want to provide based on your own human design, go for it. And you're just going to go in with the mindset that you're providing valuable information because that's what your your nurture sequence needs to do it needs to provide valuable information maybe not information maybe inspiration maybe something else but you're you're giving them something of value that they're going to want to open okay um i love that i somebody shannon is saying i like email and enjoy getting sequences from people i'm interested in yes 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 and you want to be the person in the inbox that people are interested in hearing from right <laughs> that's really an important part of the equation too so if you if your people only hear from you when it's time for you to sell something they're not going to be that motivated to open your emails but if your people know depending again on who you are the role you play in their life all of that stuff in your design but they're counting on you to show up as a certain someone in their life. And if you're showing up as that certain someone, then they're going to want to follow along and be with you on the human design journey. So let's go through the, I'm, I'm going through five email sequences tonight. We're going to go through five email, sorry, five emails in your sequence tonight and know that you can do less or you can do more. So in the first email only has to be, here's your free thing. Did you get your free thing? That's the biggest thing because a lot of times um, it may go to junk and maybe you'll put in more personalized uh, subject line in there so that it doesn't get into the junk. So let them know, here's the free thing. Give them another link to download it. I think it's a really good practice to give people two or three times that they can download the thing. So here's the free thing. Remind them that they got it. What can they expect from you over the course of this nurture sequence? Very, very, very important. If you're going to email them every day, 
let them know they're going to get an email from you every day. If you're going to email them every couple of days, let them know they're going to get an email from you every couple of days. If they're not going to hear from you again until six months from now when you want to sell something, let them know that. Like we own a crystal store. My daughters and I own a crystal store and we open with, we don't send a lot of emails for this business because we all have other gigs. So you'll just hear from us from time to time with reminders of events if you want to hear from them. And then we have something that they can opt in or out of that. So let them know what to expect from you. Let them know what they will learn from you or what the point of this sequence is, what the point of human design is, what the point of, I just, I'm seeing Robin. So what the point of Robin's human design sequence is what the point of you know say that you downloaded the relationship or you worked on the relationship lead magnet what is the point of using human design in your relationships like tie the knowledge that they're going to get into the lead magnet that they downloaded and then make sure that they understand that there's more um remind them when the second email is coming so um what does mine say it probably says something like Oh, you'll get another email from me tomorrow. Watch for the subject line, blankety blank blank. It's really great to let people know what subject line to watch for because sub now I can't speak because subconsciously, then they're already waiting for the um the next email, right? When they see that in the morning, they've already seen that line once. It's like, oh, okay, I got it. And they're gonna go and open it. Email number two, remind them again about their free thing. Did you get your free thing? Now, I know that with the lead magnets that we created, which I absolutely love, the body graph chart lead magnets that we created because they run them specifically for their own charts, which is so great compared to just a random PDF. So um, with those lead magnets, you might have to direct them back. If you didn't get your lead mag, don't call it a lead magnet. If you didn't get your whatever you're calling it, go back here and run it again. Um, what do they need to know? about that free thing or about human design to take the next step. What would a next best step be? Okay, great. So you started to, um, let's do the health one. You started to get more exercise so that you can sleep better at night. That seems like a no brainer, right? What about if you, what about if I also told you this could help? Something like that. Open the loop for the next email. You're always opening the loop for the next thing that you're doing. You want to make them curious. Another thing that's really good for this in the email sequence, and it reminded me when I was thinking about this the other day that I need to go back in and, and do mine, but do email email one of email one of three, email two of three, email three of three, because people love to complete, again, subconsciously, they love to complete steps. So that can be a really good way to get people to open more of those nurture sequence emails. And this is kind of a sidebar from the what goes in every email, but you're going to go back in. These are not one and done. You're not going to do this one time and be able to wash your hands of it and think you're done for the rest of your life because your business is going to change. You're, no matter what human design type you are, your business is going to change as you go along. You're going to probably get more and more and more niche down. More people are going to work with you that you're lit up to work with. Sometimes like some, I'm going to say problem, but that's not the word that I like to use, but some sort of um, an issue or some sort like a niche is going to be shown to you and you're just naturally going to go deeper into some area of design or some area of whatever else it is that you do. And that's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. So make sure that you go back in and look at your nurture sequences. This is something that when I started to look at my, somebody asked me for a picture of my nurture sequence. And when I went back in, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to look at these again. I did them last in the summer. And now I need to go back through and do them all again. Another thing that I want you to keep in mind is that no the people that are working for you and where they differ from you. So the person who set up my, who last set up, like the last round of my nurture sequences uh, is a one, three, and I'm a two, four. I have one, one line in my design. So she loves all the information. So I feel like my nurture sequence right now is information heavy, probably more information heavy than as a two, four, I would make it or as a two, four, than it needs to be for my people. So, but it, I was very heavily influenced by, she's a genius. And I was very heavily influenced by how she was setting this up as a one, three. 
So it's just something to keep in mind. Like it's really helpful if you know your VA's human design, if you know whoever's helping you out, if you know, and you're kind of aware of, oh, okay, but they're saying that because of this, but I actually am, am more suited for this. The point of all of that being, make sure that you go back in and and look at your email sequences again. I'm sorry, you guys. I was trying not to have to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, share, so in we're back to email number two. Share another place that they can find you. Because if they all of a sudden stop opening your emails, if they unsubscribe from your list, then you want them to find you in other places. So do you have a podcast, Instagram, Facebook, like wherever it is, maybe don't share all of them in one thing, but just share one or two places where they can find you. If you're sharing your podcast, it can be really a great idea to share a specific episode of the podcast. So why are you tying that episode into this email sequence? So say you pick the relationship lead magnet, do you have a podcast episode about relationships? Do you have a blog post where you've written about relationships? Something like that. Always try to tie it back into the free thing. Um, email number three. So again, valuable info. You're always, always, always leading with something valuable for them. What's in it for them? In this email, the invitation for you is to let them know about some sort of a paid offer. Now, this paid offer can be $7. It can be $700. $700 might be a stretch depending on your ideal client. Um, but it can be as little $7. It doesn't matter how much money this is for. This is not a money maker for you. This is so that you train them early in the game to buy from you. Because when you come out with your body graph chart paid report next month, I'll tell you about that at the end. But when you come out with your body graph paid report next month, if you don't have that yet, then you're going to um, want them to be used to handing over money so that they get into that one. Now, if you're in my email sequence now, because I know a lot of you are, and I just made a, a marketing mistake there that I'll tell you about at the end. But um, if you're in my email sequence now, you'll notice that I lead with my manuscript, which is my body graph paid report. It sells for $111. It sells really well for $111. And we're going to teach you how to do that too. I have not bothered. I used to have a $27 item in there and my $111 body graph manuscript sells way more than my $27 product ever did. So that's just market testing that I did. And that's what we get to do, right? You get to play with your emails. You get to play with your socials and see what's working, what's not. I'm someone who I would rather pay more and get it faster, manifesting generator, but I would rather pay more and get the, the big thing. Like if you show me some two things and one of them's on sale and one of them's not, I'm always going to want the thing that's not on sale. It drives me crazy, but that's the way it is. So some people are like that, right? Not everybody buys the lowest price item. Regardless, you need to, you need to, sorry, that was bossy. <laughs> I invite you to start thinking about putting something for sale in that email. Um, and another place to find you and then ask them a low buy-in question. So what's a low buy-in question? Um, what's your human design type? I would love to know what's your human design type. Reply and let me know. I would love to know what's your profile. Reply and let me know. I would love to know is human design something new to you or have you been at it for a while? Um, so ask them now, if they're in a manifesting generator sequence or a projector sequence, then don't ask them their type because they think that you already know that because you sent this wonderful, magical email sequence. But ask them something really low buy-in. It can work really well for you to do um, like A, B, C, or D and just reply with a letter or yes or no, reply with Y or N because it's so easy for people that are on their phones. They can just hit Y and be done with it because we're lazy, right? When we're um, online, we just want to be quick and, and let it go. So a low buy-in question is a really good thing. And then when they reply to you, you're going to reply to them because the email gods love it when you reply, when there's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, especially with the new Google changes. Like we all have to be so aware of how we're emailing the email address from. So um, if you haven't done that yet in your email system, make sure that your email says from and your name or something like that. Like you don't want some company name in there. You want to make your email really deliverable. Um, Okay, so email four, more valuable info. Again, valuable info is the key of the of the email sequence, okay? This 
In this one, I love to go deeper with people because I feel like if they've read four of my emails, they've downloaded the thing, they've read four of my emails, I write long form. It's just how I roll. Even on Instagram, I'll do a static post, static post with long form copy. It's it's how I communicate. So if they've read as far as your number four email in this sequence, then they're a fan. They're going to stick around for a little while. So I like to go a little deeper. Now, what I did when I first started my human design business was that I offered them one question based on their human design chart. They could ask me one question and I would send them an audio three minute recording with my answer to that question. And let me tell you, I got raving fans that still love me because of that. So the way that we beat people when we're small, the way that we beat the big guys is with accessibility. So how can you make your people, how can you make yourself more accessible to your people? We don't need 50,000 followers. We need 1,000 raving fans. That's how we build a business that lasts, right? That's how we build a business that sustains us. Can make $100,000 six-figure income very, very easily with 1,000 fans. So how do you get your people to be actual fans is that you love on your people. So that was something that worked really, really well for me. It's not sustainable at this point in my business, uh, but every once in a while I'll do on my Instagram stories and tell people to ask me a question like that. And I'll do an audio if I have some open space in my schedule. So that's another thing that you can do in your socials. Um, right now I have um, Incarnation Cross. It's about uh, something about their purpose. You know, everybody wants to know what their purpose is. Isn't that the question that everybody wants to know in human design? <laughs> do you guys find that too? That everybody is searching for purpose, right? It it happened in my, um, I almost said weight loss business, my holistic health business. I said I would never work with weight loss and everybody wants to talk about weight loss. Um, but it happened in my holistic health practice. It happened in my retail stores. It's it's like, oh my God, yes, we're all searching for purpose, right? So now I have that as the incarnation cross and people send me their incarnation cross and, or the gates that are there. And I tell them just my interpretation of it. It takes me five minutes maybe. And I send it along to them and it means something to them because I'm communicating with them again, uh, Google, Gmail, all of those forces, they love the back and forth of it as well. Right? So I think the fourth email is a really good um, place to do that. Remind them where else they can find you. Okay. And here's another thing. People, not everybody sees all of your stuff. So it, when we sit down to write something or we sit down to, you know, create a bunch of social media posts or something, we have this voice in our head. Well, you tell me in the chat if this is your voice in your head too, that says, oh my God, I can't say that again. I just told them that last week. Oh my goodness. I'm so sick of talking about whatever sleep and generators or I don't know, whatever it is for you. But nobody sees, you are the only person who sees 100% of your stuff. The only person, nobody else is ever going to see 100% of your stuff. So, and we do need repetition, right? How many times did you have to hear about something before you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. Pre-2020, we needed seven touch points in order to do business with someone. In by the end of 2022, that was up to 27. I don't even know what the current stat is. But when I tell you that you can hammer people a whole lot of times with your message, you can hammer people a whole bunch, as my granddaughter says, a whole bunch of, of times with your same message. They need to hear it over and over and over again. So 20, let's just say it's 27. 27 touches doesn't mean 27 emails. It's like when you touch them in an email, that's great. If you do a little audio, that's another thing. If you do an Instagram story and they see it, if you do a Facebook Live and they see it. So all of these things add up. But we have to tell them over and over and over again. So remind them. All that to say in email four, remind them where else they can find you. Sorry, just letting people in here. Um, okay. Oh, and that's another thing about um, email four is to share testimonials. So if you have testimonials, you want to start talking about them in your email sequence. You want to start letting people know. So say that you're, um, say that you have a, a paid report with Bodygraph that you're selling as part of your email sequence, pop, pop a couple of testimonials in about what people are saying about that paid report that you have. If you don't have testimonials, you can do something like, here's what people are saying. 
And if somebody has said something to you, you know how you get those messages all the time where, where someone will say, oh my gosh, this is so great. Like, I can't believe that you know this about me. It's like you're inside my head. Consider that a testimonial. That is a, here's what people are saying that you could do. So share a testimonial there. Remind them of your paid product, all those things. Email number five. Remind them how human design is going to help them move forward. This is something that I think that in the human design space, we miss a lot because we are surrounded. Oh, just one second. I need to, oh, there we go. <laughs> we, I'm just going to hit mute here. There we go. We are surrounded. Oh my goodness. Sorry, you guys. There we go. We are surrounded by human design people and human design information. And we think that everybody knows what human design is and how it could help us. Pop in the chat for me if you deal with clientele who are already human design informed or if you're speaking to new people with human design. I'm going to have a sip of hot tea. New, new, both, new. Mix, both, new. The both is hard. That's where I'm at too. It's so much easier if it's just one or the other. Very new. Okay. So I, I want you to think about then as you're moving forward to create your email sequence, your social media, whatever you're creating, always remember that you have to be speaking to the part of the journey that your person is at. So Shannon, I think it was you who said, I mean, I know a lot of people are seeing new, but you said very new, I think. So for you, it's like, why is human design the answer? Not that human design is the answer, but why is it the answer? Like we have to kind of come way back to speak to someone who's brand new than we do to someone who's already aware of human design. Very different messaging. So provide value, but also like for what stage of the journey that they're at. That's going to be a really important piece for all of us. Again, share another testimonial, share a client win. So how did you help someone with human design? How did you specifically help someone with human design? What did someone learn about their human design that made it, um, that made it more tangible for them, that moved them forward in what they were doing. Remind them where else they can find you again. And then if this is the last email in your sequence, if, if five emails is it for you, if three emails was it for you, whatever it is, if that's the last email in your sequence, then tell them what's next. Okay. So in my email, it is, you can expect to hear from me twice a week from here on in. Uh, yours may be once a week from here on in yours may be once a month. I'm going to give you some tips about email though. If you're open to it, are you guys okay? If I give you some random tips about email. Okay. Um, Corinne, let me know what's the challenging part for you. So, um, oh, go oh ahead. sorry. Um, more or less, I've gotten a lot of the phrase of like, dumbing it down which is also like totally against my energy it's like a huge barrier for me um so that's where I'm kind of battling is really finding the right population or the the right space okay so um what bothers you about I don't like that term but I'm going to use it I know you I didn't like it either but like what it bothers either. you about that um, what bothers me about it? It's not that it bothers me. I literally, I struggle. I just can't. I think I'm, I'm think I'm like bringing it, breaking things down for people oh. and I'm not. <laughs> okay. What's your type? Uh, I'm a six, two emo man, Jen. And you're okay. You said you're, you're profile six, two. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you know who your people are yet? Or are you like, have people found you it. and you're fighting it? Yeah. What? Have people found you and you're fighting it? Like you're fighting against these people that are your people or have you not found your people yet? That's what I'm, you know, that's, I think that's the process. It's not that I'm fighting it. It's just, I'm trying to, I think I have a mix, such a mix of people that either are new or not new whatsoever to, to the human design language and both are seeking me. So um, this was some, something my wife actually mentioned the other night. She's like, you provide the information and 
people like me would get lost, but then other people are asking me for it. So it's, it's that challenge. Okay. I have one more question for you. How new are you in your human design business? Um, I've been more or less like working on this journey for two years. Um, but really like finally making more intentional action the past six months. Okay. Um, so I think that maybe we need to do, um, some sort of a webinar on niches. Let me know in the chat if you think that would be helpful. I think Gittis and Elgis are here as well. Victoria, I think I saw her too. So let us know in the chat if you think that would be helpful to kind of niche it down a little bit with us. Um, so a few things, Corinne, that's, thank you for sharing that. Um, it's okay. One of the things is that's human design, right? I mean, it is massive, a massive, massive, massive topic. And I feel like people fall on one end of the extreme or the other. They know nothing or they know a lot. So um, I would love to invite you to just notice who's following your account, because right now we're all following each other. Right? I don't follow a lot of people, so please don't be offended personally if I don't follow you. I just, I'm, I don't consume social media, so I try very hard not to consume social media. So, um, but for the most part, like you're following a lot of human design people and a lot of human design people are following you. But what we need to think about is, are these people hiring you? So are they the people who are actually going to part with their money and hire you? Or are they just following along wanting information? Because you could do information until the cows come home about human design. Like literally you could be 10 years on Instagram teaching human design and no money exchanging hands. And you're probably not here to never have a paycheck, right? That's, that's not part of your divine purpose is not to not have a paycheck. And I think that we want to provide the kind of information that puts people closer to making a decision to work with you. So start to think about, okay, well, who do I actually work with? If you have a client roster of people that you'd love to work with, I would go back and see what did I love about these people? What issues did they come to me for? What was I, whatever you're doing with your coaching readings, whatever it is, what is the common theme there of the people that I love to work with? And then that's who you create the content for. Because you're always going to have people on either side of it, but it's these people in the middle that you create everything for. And then whatever happens on the outskirts happens. So hopefully that's a little bit helpful. Also, like you've got that second line in there. Like, uh, I mean, I'm a two, four, right? So that you second line. so many games. Sorry. I said that second line. She plays so many games with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so many yeah. sixes. I have two in my lines. So it's like very much that that theme um and I'm all individual circuitry so it's uh, yeah I'm a fun combination yeah I have a client who's all individual circuitry too I love it <laughs> love it love it love yeah. it yeah yeah mm -hmm. well, I think we need to do uh I think we need to do something on that next um okay so um there was somewhere I was going with um uh, there was some little tip I was going to give you about email writing and now I can't remember what it was. See, I can't get distracted. Um, it'll come back. I'll just like bring it back to me. But for now, we will go through um, some just tips that are on the worksheet. So always write as if you're writing to one person. And this is something when I said earlier, oh my God, I just made a mistake. I said, I think some of you guys are on. So whether you're doing a social media, um, you know, a live on your stories or whatever, you're not going to say, hey, you guys, I just hopped on and blah, 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 blah. No, I'm not a you guys. If I'm watching your story, I'm not a you guys. Like I'm looking around kind of like the waitress at the restaurant when she says, and what are we having to drink? I'm like, I don't know what we're having to drink, but I'm going to have a club soda. Thank you very much. Sorry if somebody's a waitress and you're and you're using that languaging, but you just want to speak to one person. Same thing in your email. You're not sending an email out to your list. Never, never, never call people that they're getting on your email list or people don't like the word join. They don't like to join. They don't like to sign up. You want to um, use different languaging than that when you're bringing them in and always speak to one person. Um, you can personalize in most email systems, you can personalize. I think that sometimes we we go with the other way and we over-personalize and somebody who's really new to your list might be looking and going, she doesn't even know me and she's calling me Dr. Marie. Like what, who, did, who is she to call me that? So there's that as well, right? 
Um, once you come into my world and you, you've been there a while, I talk extremely conversationally. Like my people in my email world know things about me. They know things about my husband. I always like, don't tell them this if you see him on the street, you know, <laughs> not, not terrible personal things, just funny things. So, you, you know, you'll find your vibe in email, but just let people know, um, that just always speak to one person, whether you're social media, anything speak as if you're speaking to one person, use stories whenever you can absolutely use stories. So basic email format. If you don't have any idea what to say, tell a story, teach a lesson, sell a thing, tell a story, teach a lesson, sell a thing. The thing that you sell could be reply to this email and let me know your thoughts on this. Um, go here and get another free thing. It doesn't have to be actually buy a thing. It's a call to action of some sort. Okay. Speak in your own voice. Oh my gosh. Speak in your own voice. This is like the thing that I, the hill that I will die on. Please, 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 please let your people know you and see you. Please don't, don't try to use business talk to talk to people. Most people read at a seventh grade level and people are real people. You guys know you have heard me say before here, um, don't make it weird. Don't make it weird. Like I think as business people, as entrepreneurs, we make it weird so many times when we don't have to make it weird. Weird. You're a person, they're a person. Don't make it weird. Just talk in real language. Oh, thank you. Um, tell a story, teach a lesson, sell a thing. Uh, and stay on brand. So, and I, like, you know, your conscious son is your brand. I know that you know that. I also think your profile comes into it a whole lot. Your human design profile is a massive piece of the puzzle. So Corinne spoke, she's a six, two, she's going to show up very differently than me as a two, four, someone who's a one, three is going to be married to me, but is going to show up very differently in life. Like we were sitting, um, in the kitchen this afternoon and I don't know, I said something and my husband asked me like three questions about it. And I looked at him and I'm like, I don't know the answer to any of those things. Oh, is I couldn't get a pedicure with my girl until the 27th of the month. And he asked me, well, is she on vacation? Well, like he asked me these three questions. I'm like, it never occurred to me to ask. Like it just, I have one, one line. I, I don't care. I don't like, <laughs> I don't know. So he's going to show up very differently. He's not going to write an email sequence, but he's going to show up very differently in his email than I am as a two, four. So lean into that. Like, that's what you're, that's why, you know, your human design so that you can leverage it in every area of your life and show people how it's done. You're the example of how it's done. Right. Um, okay. So I remembered what the other thing was. I knew it would come back to me. Uh, I learned a lot of email marketing. I took some courses with, I think they're called the email marketing guys. I think Robin Kennedy, they are so fun. If you love email, they are so much fun to follow. They are from, um, one is from the UK and one is from somewhere else where he has a really cool accent like you guys do. Um, and they did, they did the coolest thing that I have ever seen done in an email. My first email in their nurture sequence, Kennedy came on, he has some app on his phone and he came on and he was actually walking to get a cup of coffee. And he said, Hey Vicki, I just wanted to welcome you to the community. I joined their membership. I just wanted to welcome you to the community. I'm so glad that you um, joined. And I don't know, three things. It was like a less than a minute long video in my email as part of my nurture sequence. I was so tied to those guys for so very long because they personalized everything. And again, it's that whole thing where accessibility is how we meet, how we beat the big guys. I think there's a, there can be this notion that if you overgive or if you make it too personal, or if you aren't professional enough, that people aren't going to take you seriously in business and they're not going to think you're one of the big guys. And I don't think that anything can be further than the truth, further from the truth is if we show up as our whole selves in our whole businesses, then people really are enamored by us. Like they really do. The people who are meant to find you will find you absolutely when you do that. And there's such a drive for authenticity now too, right? I mean, even those big guys are lots of times now trying to look like they're smaller. So there you go. Okay. So I am going to check the chat for, um, 
I should have asked you to do the question thing and I didn't. I'm sorry. Does anybody have a question specifically? I'm just going to get you to retype it in the in the uh, chat box, please. And I see that Algus is on telling someone to email support at bodygraphchart.com. So if you're having technical difficulties getting your nurture sequence set up or doing the webhook, I think it's called, if you're not on a system that's already integrated with Bodygraph Chart, then just get on support at bodygraphchart.com and they will help you out through that. Um, I'm just checking here. Uh, oh, there you go. Yes, Algus, the tech team is absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so any questions, you can un unmute and ask. And if not, then I'm going to move on to tell you what's coming next. I have one. I was trying to type, but it was taking too long. It's okay. Hi, Kathy. Okay, hi. So, um, okay, so I have a paid report. That's just, that's the one that Karen does that I offer right now. And I have one that I did with the lean magnet that I am offering currently free, but I'm realizing as I'm building it, that it's going to be my paid report when I continue to build on it. But for right now it's free. And um, I'm trying to find the best ways to get people to these reports, because right now my chart so generating software is a button on my homepage, you know, that says, Hey, get your chart here. And they push it go to that and then that takes them to the chart thing. So if I wanna talk about this great chart somewhere on my homepage, I mean, I guess I could mention it and do another page that talks about it and then that could, li could link back to the chart. How, do, how are people promoting these reports both on their websites and in their emails in a way that doesn't list out 18 steps? Go to my website, find your chart, run your chart and you know, cause you gotta scroll down. And I want to right away put the idea of the chart or the um, report in front of them. So I'm already thinking maybe I can use something like Loom and like do a video reel of what mine looks like and then put that somewhere. But, you know, just I'm curious what other people are starting to do with theirs. Sure. So um, you guys, people are popping answers into the chat. So on my website at the very bottom, and these aren't body graph ones at the bottom, I'm in the process of fixing those, but it just says here are my best free resources and I've got them all listed there and each has its own welcome sequence that they go through. So that's important too, that everything that you have, every lead magnet that you have, you want to have an email sequence to go from that because it should tie together. Um, are your people new to human design, Kathy, or uh, longer in the game? Well, I have a human design um, Facebook group that's about 1,700 people right now called Intuitive Human Design, and that has people who've been in their experiment a long time, as well as new people who are finding me through my podcast, because I do a weekly podcast called Real Human Design Stories, and so that is really, I, I have, so I, yeah, I have a huge mix. And so what I'm doing is when people run their chart, I'm assuming if you're running your chart, <clears throat> Just for the sake of running your chart, you're probably newer. So my email sequence, I have to redo for reasons I won't get into, but I'm going to have that be speaking to you like you're pretty new. Whereas I have other resources that draw people in when they're more experienced. And my mentorship program, what I tend to do most is work with people who have been in their design for a little bit and they know it, but they're they're not really they're still up here. They're not making decisions from their body. They can talk about their sacral till the cows come home, but they still don't say yes when you, or you, uh -huh, when you ask them a yes, no question. Those people are who I mentor with. So I'm all over the place a little bit. Well, no, I, I feel you because it, it is hard because we do get those people at, at opposite ends of the spectrum. But so um, <clears throat> the, the paid report, what is the topic of the paid report that you're doing? Um, I'm calling it loving all parts of yourself and it is going like I've already, so I took, there was a thing, it was not actually called a lead magnet, but when I went in to look in the marketplace for the lead magnet, there was like an 18 page report that had some kind of unusual name, but it was considered just a report you could add as a new one. And it basically has type um, profile, it has type um, strategy, and authority profile and the centers, right? 
And so once I added it and put in all my marketing colors, it was really clear. I have the one eight and I also have the 2644. So anybody else's words just don't work for me. I have to use my own voice it has to be mine. So first I put all my pretty colors on it and stuff. And then I was like, okay, I have this intuitive human design stuff on my face. I can change this part to this easy. And I started doing this. And then next thing you know, I started realizing, oh, this I'm leaving it up there. And right now it's got all my initial stuff at the beginning. And it's got my descriptions of the types. And now I'm like offline writing, taking all this stuff from a class I did on the centers and writing my stuff about the centers that I'm going to put in there. And I realized this is gonna be really damn good. This is like not gonna be a free report anymore. But right now, because it's a mixture of people stuff and because I haven't figured out some of the places to put it, it's a free report. So if you're interested, go look at it and tell me what you think. Um, but yeah, so then, so when it's done, it's going to have those things, but with you know instructions in the beginning that say this is how you read your body graph this is you know these are this is what a motor is you know those sorts of like basics so it's going to be pretty detailed of those basic things um and then later i'll add more to it when i can find the way to do like the incarnation cross energies and stuff in a way that can because that's just so much and then I'll add when as i add more i can just change the price right yeah. So. so a couple of things we, we do need to get back to how to promote it because that was the original yeah, question. So right. sure I don't leave that. Okay. Right. Um, but I have one more question for you and then something about the incarnation crosses. The other question is, does this lead magnet, this paid report that you're doing nicely flow into an offer that you already have? Um, well, I, yeah, I, I've already put on the la the first page, a little bit about me and then on the last page, it says next steps. And so it tells them to, con to you know, reach out to set up a discovery call about mentoring, those sorts of things. And right now, I don't have any other paid offers other than my mentoring program. And, um, you know, I've been putting a lot into my podcast and things like that. So, okay. So I would be getting that on your podcast and in your show notes when it's ready, the paid report. Mm -hmm. Um, I would be leading with that, get a banner on, somebody said that here, a banner on your homepage that brings people to that paid report. Um, and then your email sequence written to lead people into your mentorship with you so that all roads lead to paid report, then mentorship, then whatever you decide to do after that, out of that. Does that make sense? Yes. But like when you say, I know how to put a banner on my, um, site and stuff, but we're, the banner is going to just take you to the chart generating page, or do you guys have a separate page? where you talk about the report and then you, that page goes back and because in order to get the report, they have to go to the chart generating software, run their chart again in your. But they should just, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody from tech, but the way my paid report works is that they just put their birth information in on that actual report page. Like they don't go back and run their chart again. They run it on the report page. I have no. the chart generating page with the reports on it too. Yeah. Yeah, like you should be able to, please correct me if I'm wrong. I know there are some tech people here. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, thank yes. you. Yes. So uh, the way it works, if you use the embed code and let's just say you use the PayPal or Stripe payment uh, option. So yes, they all, you cannot embed the chart, uh, sorry, the report as a standalone product on your website. And it cannot, you cannot share the link directly to the report. But if you will use uh, WooCommerce, for example, for the checkout, then you can build a store where it will be um, um, similar experience as on our a business website where there will be listed standalone reports and their descriptions. And then you can redirect to the list of the uh, reports that you have to offer. Or you can use our business website for the checkout, leaving out just the shop and uh, the checkout uh, pages, right? And then you can redirect people uh, to the report on the business website. So there are quite a few options how you can achieve this, but you cannot achieve this if your um, 
if you just embedded the uh, chart at your website uh, with the widgets underneath and you're using Stripe and PayPal as the direct payment of um, methods. I knew there was a reason I didn't cancel that appointment with you, Victoria, that I've set up for Monday, because now I'm going to have you show me how to do it. Uh, I had my okay, because I, um, so I, so, so you're saying that you can, there's a, what was the other form of payment you said? Um, so the WooCommerce, WooCommerce allows you to set up the shop, right? Um, if you uh, will look into our help center or any video tutorials that talk about business website, the, the, you will see how you can set up, because our business website got that exact experience when people can actually visit your shop where all your reports and other products are listed. You can add them to the chart or to the cart, for example, and check out all at once. So I can buy multiple reports for my entire family and pay just once right now, not just for so, singular uh, reports. Is that something that people like me who already have an existing website where we can have a store on your thing that you're talking about and set it up that way? Or do we have to have our own website? You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to have. No, so there are two ways. You either can use the WooCommerce as a, you know, with all this, I think WooCommerce uh, have a, some charge, you know, it's not pay platform. And then you can set, set up WooCommerce uh, shop separately at your website, or you can utilize the business website, just the shop part, and the checkout, uh, you know, part uh, to redirect people to that specific shop and upload your reports and other products there. Correct, I'll guess me if I'm wrong, because <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you are correct. And basically, if you have already a website and want to have better checkout system, or you want to utilize uh, your automation better, you can basically to create a business website and uh, set up domain like checkout or shop dot your domain dot com or something like that. And then you will still have your website and basically you will just link any of your products to a uh, shop page. Oh, cool. Oh, I'm never going to get off the computer, I swear. All I'm doing is trying to make this do all this stuff all the time. And it's beautiful. I'm going to start doing it outside at least. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you. Thank, thank you. That's awesome. And August. So ways to promote this is like set up your calendar that twice a week you're going to promote that paid report or that, you know, one email a month is going to go to, to promote that paid report. If you're on LinkedIn, write articles that lead to the paid report, but like sell the, sell the benefit of it, not the, oh, this report will tell you your incarnation cross and your centers and your this and your that. Well, no, what does that actually do for them? But yeah, just talk about it in real life. Show like right now I would be doing B-roll of you actually creating this thing. And like, you look like you would do some crazy things. You've got the one eight, you would do some crazy things. Like I'd be like, Yay, you're all celebrating that, you know, you're getting it done. The incarnation cross is how I do mine on my report. They're not all done. That is the one thing that I have to go in every time someone buys. And I do that incarnation cross because I was not holding myself up for 192 incarnation crosses. I just promise it within seven days. They usually get it in three days, but I promise it within seven days. And they, um, I run the incarnate, I put the incarnation cross in as I sell them. So that's a, a good workaround for that. I'm a big fan of selling things before you have them completely created. So we could do a thing in our report where it said your, you know, where it defaults and says the name of your incarnation cross. Um, I will be sending you a personalized blah, blah, blah. And then when I see that I've sold a report, I just go in and no, okay, okay. So what I do is, um, but yours is an automated, like it's automated in body graph chart. So oh, it is. It pulls like it's it's in my content, Victoria. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's in my content where it says, you know, where it says your content lives there, um, and I go into the incarnation crosses there, and I click do the the incarnation cross that they have, 
and then I send them the report. So my report gets sold through Thrivecart, um, through Thrivecart, and then there's one more step, and then um, I get the email that it's been sold, and I do the incarnation cross. So they don't get an instant download the way they do with. No, I mean, you can do instant downloads, but I just because I don't have the incarnation crosses done. Uh, once I have the incarnation crosses all in there, then I will be able to do them instant. And I also have found that my people seem to think that it's more valuable because it's being customized for them. Like if you, you know, if you get an instant report online, you know that it's completely and totally automated, right? Whereas if it takes a couple of days to get to you, the excitement is building and you're, you're like, you're anticipating it. Right. So then it, it almost like it, you're more excited for it when it gets there. Yeah. So hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> yes. But now we need another tutorial of how to use Thrivecart so we can have non-instant downloads. Cause I really love the idea of it getting emailed to them in a, a separate, like personalized email. Yeah. Well, you know, I won't be the one doing the Thrive Cart tutorial, but yes, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay, so Astrid is asking, is it smart to show early on in your sequence that you know their type profile and the details of their chart? I do, Astrid. If I have them, so my people go into ConvertKit, and oh, I don't like this languaging, but this is the languaging we have, get segmented by type. So they go through a welcome sequence from their chart that is that is divided up by type. Um, so I talk about their type only in, in their sequence. Um, there are some suggestions here, um, Kathy, for reports. I'm just going through the chat. If you're watching the replay, I will read them out loud again. Sorry for this. Um, yes, we definitely do need, uh, do need videos, Dr. Marie, because I, yes, we'll, we'll get uh, Victoria on some of that. She's so great at doing those videos for us. Um, can someone type the system she is saying? Kelly, which system did you mean? Oh, WooCommerce, thank you. Um, Victoria, this might be a question for you. Is it possible to lead people directly to the paid reports? Now yeah, it's being so, the chart. Yeah, yeah, so we just talked about it with Kathy. So no, if uh, it has to be chart generated uh beforehand if you're using the stripe or paypal and if you want uh you know to actually direct them directly to the report and have a store at your website then it's going to be woocommerce uh, option which we talked before awesome thank you um okay so there are no more questions in the chat is anyone that's here live want to ask anything else and if not, I am going to um, I'm going to tell you about what's next. Okay, so March 28th, I believe, is the date. Don't quote me. We will have the details for you in the next um, few days. But March 28th, we are doing a webinar on creating passive income with paid reports. So we will answer all of these questions and then some. And I mean, it's the dream, right? To have some passive income in your in your business so that you're not always having to be the face online. Uh, and then in April, we are working to get to um, do some sort of a session, not like bootcamp, not as killer style as bootcamp, but where we take you for um, 21 days through sessions where we actually are in session together and we write your paid reports together so that we are all supported and that we have each other in a co-working session and we can help you to move your business forward by creating paid reports You'll have us in the room with you as you go along for 21 days. So you don't have to feel the pressure of like, oh my God, this is five days and I have to get this done. You don't have to be all many gen on by Vicky's fire and intensity on you for all in five days. We're just going to take it slow and we're going to get it slow-ish. 21 days is still pretty fast to get your paid report. And then of course, we'll be talking about promoting it and doing all of those things together as we go along. Okay. Um, so. Anything else before we finish, or do you feel like you're good to go now and start to write your nurture sequences? My my challenge for you is to at least do three, okay? At least do three, and even if that's what you land on, that's perfectly okay. Let your people know they've landed in the right place. 
let them know you love them and let them know that you can help them if they give you some money. <laughs> Not give you, but if they exchange some money with you, okay? Um, okay, I'm launching my paid report at the solar eclipse. Woohoo! All right, thanks for being here, everybody. This did record, so we will have a replay. <laughs> And maybe next time we won't have any tech glitches. Wouldn't that be absolutely lovely? <laughs> Thanks for being here.